Today, I've put together a compilation of some of my favourite Gallium videos. If you enjoy this video, you can make sure you don't miss any of my future releases by subscribing, then click the notification bell, and select all. For those of you who don't know, gallium is a low melting point metal, which turns into a liquid at about 30 degrees centigrade, which is about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And because it's non-toxic, it's safe to handle. You can literally hold a pool of it in the palm of your hand, and pour it from one hand to another. When I bought mine, it came in a plastic test tube like this. And you can see it's solid at room temperature. So to use it, I put the test tube in a bowl of warm water to raise the temperature. And after a few minutes, it turned into a liquid. So I could pour it out into my hand. You can also see the core from the centre of the test tube, which didn't have time to melt. It's great fun to play with, and it feels really weird. It can leave a grey discolouring on your hand, but that washes off easily with warm water and soap. And you can also melt the gallium by putting it directly in a bowl of warm water. After a few minutes, you can check to see if it's molten. Then I like to use a syringe to suck it all up. It's really cool. Once you've got it all, you can expel any water you collected, and use it for some really cool stuff, like filling up moulds. I needed quite a lot of gallium for this project, and I filled up all eight little Lego-style figures. Then I melted down some more, and used this big syringe to fill up a load of these blocks too. I left them to cool down, and popped the figures out of the mould, and they looked absolutely brilliant. They're nice and heavy, shiny, and you can really see all of the detail. The blocks came out well too, although some of the notches on the top didn't actually form properly. But they're still really cool. I also filled up this large mould, to make this really big figure. It's really quite heavy. And you can see it's about the size of the palm of my hand. Look at the size difference to the smaller figures. I decided to heat it up with a blowtorch to melt it back down so I could use it for other projects. This time I used a candle making kit to try and make a gallium candle. I pierced a hole in the end for the wick, and used a small cake candle pushed through, and held centrally, which I encased with gallium. Once it had set, I removed it from the mould, cut off the end of the candle, and lit it up. It lit straight away, but then it went out, so I had to melt off some of the gallium to dig out the candle a bit, and tried again. This time it worked pretty well. As the candle burned, it melted down the gallium. For the next one, I wanted to make a round metal ball, so I poked a hole in a ping pong ball, stood it upright in an egg cup, then filled it with gallium. As it cooled down, it actually expanded a bit. So I snapped off the excess, then peeled off the plastic shell, to reveal a really cool, almost perfectly round metal ball. It feels really dense. And it actually rolls really well. Pouring gallium into moulds is great fun, and you can even make your own. I used a lump of plasticine, spread it out onto a table, and made an impression of a padlock. Then I went one further by slicing the mould, and wrapping it around this hasp and staple. I smoothed out the mould, then filled it with gallium. Once it had set, I removed the plasticine, and there's our padlock. Slightly irregular, but it is quite fun. And you can use a hairdryer to open the lock. I also used plasticine to make a series of fidget spinners. One of the first ones I made was by simply taking an imprint of a plastic spinner, 
then taking a skateboard wheel bearing, placing it in the centre, and filling the mould up with gallium. I left it to set, then removed it from the mould, and had this really cool, really well balanced metal fidget spinner. I removed the caps from the bearing on my plastic fidget spinner, and used them for the gallium one. For this one I rolled out some plasticine, and made a spiral around a bearing. Then filled it with gallium. It looks great, and after it turned solid, I removed the plasticine mould, and fitted the bearing caps. Although this one is weighted badly and out of balance, it is really cool. For this one I used a round plastic container to make an imprint, then a pen top to make a series of spikes all the way around. I added the bearing, and filled it with the gallium, to make this really cool spiky fidget spinner. And with the yellow bearing caps, it looks a bit like a sunshine spinner. I used plasticine to make a dollar symbol fidget spinner, and even a 3 million subscriber special spinner, to thank all my subscribers when I passed that milestone. You can make a yes and no decision making spinner using gallium letters which I cast in a separate mould. I just added them in to the molten pool of gallium and left it all to set. It's a great tool for helping you make your mind up. And I even used two of these little figures that I made earlier, which I embedded into a mould, and stuck all together with more liquid gallium, to make this really cool spinner. You can see it ties them on really well, and it's nice and strong. Gallium liquid metal can also be pretty devastating to aluminium, or aluminium as you may call it. I'll show you with this aluminium coke can. I wanted to keep the top closed, so I pierced a hole in the side of the can to drain out the drink. Then abraded the surface of the can with some sandpaper, so it's nicely scratched up, and added a little bit of the liquid gallium to the surface. Then I left it to see what happens. Over the next hour or so, it seemed to change. It was kind of absorbed into the aluminium, and it appeared to change the structure. And when I poked it with my finger, look what happened. I was able to poke a hole straight through it. The can had become soft and almost stretchy. And I could sort of just pull it apart and tear off the top. Pretty cool, huh? The material is now soft enough to just roll up with my fingers. I kept pulling, and removed the whole top. It just peeled away. But the rest of the structure did appear unaffected. And I could just wash off the silvery grey residue on my hands with warm soapy water. For the next can, which I emptied in the same way, I cut the bottom off with a knife, dried it out with some kitchen paper, and abraded the inside with sandpaper. Then I also did the top again. I poured some gallium in, and coated the inside. And also added some to the top. Over the next hour, the paint started to crack and flake. It still looks like a can of coke, but look how weak it is now. I can just poke my finger through the side, and pull pieces off. It's not sharp at all, and it doesn't hurt me. I pulled the top straight off, and pushed my thumb right the way through. Then I just crushed up the whole thing in my hand. It's crazy, isn't it? And it's not even sharp. It just disintegrates. I even crushed the whole body of the can. We're just left with these little pieces of almost dust. And here's another one I did. 
It just completely tears apart in my hand. And I also tried it with an aluminium drinks bottle, where I sanded some paint off and applied gallium. Look what happened. I was able to just pull the whole thing apart. The aluminium is a bit like a sponge. It slowly absorbs the gallium and affects the material. In another experiment, I took an aluminium tennis racket, sanded the paint off at the throat and added some gallium. After just a few minutes, the frame started to crack. Then, as the gallium absorbed further up the aluminium, all of a sudden this happened. The tension in the frame ripped it apart. Crazy, huh? The metal is now soft and it's lost all its strength. It easily just breaks apart. The gallium seems to creep along the frame as it affects it. Just that small amount of gallium really devastated this racket. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell if you want to be notified every time I launch something new. And if you want to see more, you can click on the links. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching.